Okay, so I was talking earlier in my video about an artist named Albert Durer, and he is a really um, amazing artist. And he lived a long time ago in the late 1400s, early 1500s. I mean, that's just amazing to think about that long ago. He was a famous printmaker from Germany. He um, is known for his woodcuts that hopefully I can teach y'all about too uh, coming up soon. But the one that I want to talk to you about today is called The Hair. And it is actually a watercolor painting of a hare or a rabbit. And um, Easter's this weekend, so I thought I would teach you how to create a watercolor painting inspired by Albert Durer's the hair. We're going to start off with um, a pencil, and we learned earlier about charcoal. You could very nicely use charcoal for this sketch, but I'm just going to use pencil. And this was my example that I did a little bit earlier on my super fast video for you to see. And now I'm going to rework that a little bit slower and giving you some more directions. So I want to be able to include the entire um, hair or rabbit in my picture plane here. And this is that um, multi-purpose mixed media drawing painting paper. Works really nice for this. Um, and let me get a clean sheet because I've been using charcoal. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start with my fist. And placement is important here because I want to be able to include the whole body of my rabbit. So I want to at, at least fit the head towards the center somewhere. I like it right in here. So I'm gonna use my fist to give me a guide about how wide I want the head. So here's one side of the head, here's the other. And I want to use a U to get me started. I'm ghost drawing. I am not pressing down hard at all. And now I'm just gonna press down lightly and get my U onto the page. Okay. Here is our rabbit face looking at us. And now I'm going to place the little wiggly nose down here. And I like to use a wide V for that. To, and I'm gonna go down the center of the head, close to the bottom, and get that wide V in. And then I'm gonna make a line down for the, in between the, the cheeks and the mouth area. It's gonna be like right in here. So. Now I'm gonna place the eyes, and the eyes are gonna go about midway of the rabbit's head, and it feels like these are kind of pointing to them, the tips of the nose. So I'm just gonna place them right in there. And I am gonna make those a little bit bigger. I'm gonna be painting these with watercolor, and my pencil lines are gonna show some, and that really doesn't bother me because watercolor paint is supposed to be transparent, and my pencil drawing is part of my art. Um, now I'm going to place the ears. Let's see, the, the center of the ears is gonna be right in here. I can have them going straight up. I can place them however I want. I can give my, my rabbit some personality however I would like to. So I'm gonna have this ear going up and over. Kinda looks like a horn right now, <laughs> but it will change. And I'm gonna suggest the center of the ear and then this time, I'm gonna give him some personality. I'm gonna go up and over. He's like, what? He hears something in the grass. Checking it out. Okay, so here's the head and the ears. And now to, to place the body, I'm just gonna have his hip area going off to the right, or you could have it going off to the left. It's really up to you how you want that, um, the placement of your rabbit's body. So here I'm gonna start towards the, the nose area or the cheek, and I'm just gonna make a quick curve down. And then I'm going to make a line down here because this is going to be his front leg area right in here. Now for his little haunch legs in the back, his hip, I'm just gonna make a quick curve. And then his little back legs, cause he's ready to hop. Okay, now I'm gonna suggest a little tail, puffy tail, and I suggested a little paw. I guess that's what you call it on rabbit. Okay, 
now I'm ready to paint. And now Albert, Albrecht's um, hair watercolor painting is so detailed. And I would love for you to practice this. Let me just move this for just a second because this is a scratch sheet of paper. Practice this with just um, the watercolor brush that maybe came with your paint set. It's a really nice size for this because we're trying to get the texture of fur. We want to stay on the tippy toes of that brush. I love Cassie Stevens. She's an art teacher and she has some awesome videos that I'd love for y'all to check out. And she talks about staying on the tippy toes like a ballerina. And that's so important. You don't want to do the splits, as she says, and create that really messy hair look of your brush. So you want to keep it nice and pointed. Staying on the tippy toes, just practice with the water on your brush. Um, even on a colored piece of construction paper is a fun way to practice that too. So I'm going to wet this and I'm just going to use brown paint. That's the only color I'm going to be using on my, ba on my bear, on my rabbit. Um, you could use coffee for this if you don't have paint. And I'm going to actually try that later with coffee. I haven't had a chance to do that, but because we always drink it all. Um, and so I'm going to try that later, but coffee is the perfect color for brown. And so this is pretty intense. I only added a little bit of water, so it's going to be really dark. Stay on my tippy toes. See how dark that is? And if you lay your paintbrush down, you're going to get a big fat line. But if you stay on the tippy toes, look at this thin, nice line you can create just by, and look how scumbly this is. That means I need more water. It's too dry. So I'm going to dip in and I'm going to show you adding more water to the paint you can get lighter values. So instead of getting more paint this time, I'm just gonna go straight to the water. And these are long hatching lines. Look at the difference in value, dark and light. This is just more water. I do not use white with the watercolor paint. I do not use that. I just use the paint with water to make the value lighter. So you wanna practice these short little hair lines and practice staying in the right direction. Okay, just keep practicing that. And lines next to lines. Look at this. It's already, it's looking like fur growing on my paper. I love it. So just practice on a scratch sheet of paper. Um, that. And now I'll show you going straight to your pencil drawing. Okay, I'm going to start with my brown. And I'm, I'm going to start right in here under the neck. Because, oh, yep, I knew that was going to be a really dark value. I'm going to start working and pulling this out, just dashes. And I'm even going outside my line. In watercolor paint, in watercolor sketches, they're usually just suggestions of where your subject is. It doesn't have to be painting inside the lines. Now, I am not getting more paint on my brush. I'm just barely touching the water because I want a lighter value. And I'm changing the direction of my strokes. I love this white paper shining through. This is not a coloring page, okay? We are not trying to fill in every spot because we want this to look like watercolor paint. We don't want it to look like just filled in spaces. And I'm going, I'm using my lines for a guide of where I want the fur. Okay, see how dark and then light here? That's just more water. Now, eventually, Look how white I am now. Barely see it. I am gonna have to go back and get more water. But if you want to still make your lighter value, just take a little bit of the paint over to your lid as your palette, and you can add water there and create the value that you really want. Just gonna keep going. And again, this is on another video where I went on and just finished this out. You just keep going in your line direction. And I'm just going along my sketch, then adding more water. I want it to be lighter towards the center. And I encourage you to look up some images for resources. I do not have a pet rabbit that I can make look still for me. An artist, a good artist uses um, references from life, from memory, or pictures, they research, they go on field trips. I love to paint on a field trip. That's called painting in plein air. Um, 
let me go ahead and paint in this. Ooh, I love this bunny rabbit's tail. Look how light I'm being and quick with my paintbrush strokes. Okay. But look up some images, maybe Google some images to help you out. And definitely you're going to be seeing Albert Durer's hair that I'm going to be showing you on this video also. And I'm following along my sketch line right now. We're just learning, practicing those short brush strokes. If your paintbrush starts to look like it's got some crazy hair, that means it needs more water. Watercolor paint should look very watery. It should be see-through like glass. Transparent is that word. And I think on the bridge of the nose, I'm gonna start pulling in a little bit more solid because it's getting, the fur's getting so short and close together. This is really monochromatic. Mono is a prefix meaning one, and chroma means color. So that word means painting in one color, monochromatic. The color scheme is monochromatic if it's one color with lights and darks of that same color. So let me check this out. I am loving how this white is shining through, but I feel like it needs a little bit more right in here. Okay, now I am gonna add a really dark value for his eyes. I want them to be dark. So I'm gonna add some brown over here to my paint palette and I am going to mix in some black. Notice I'm not painting, I'm not mixing in the paint set. I'm mixing over here on my palette. Okay, now I'm gonna be painting in the eyes and I'm really staying on those tippy toes. And one thing with watercolor, you have to watch out and I've told y'all this in class before, but wet next to wet bleeds. Do you see how that's trying to bleed into um, the fur? Which is really not bothering me that bad. Like, I feel like I could just blend it out with my paintbrush. But if you get into a mess and it's really bleeding, that means mixing in, you don't want it to, just get a little piece of a paper towel and it'll drink it right up. Okay, um, but lesson learned right there, what you wanna do is just let the areas dry. Ooh, I like that dark value in there though. Sometimes a mistake can help you figure out it's really something beautiful. So I'm liking that. It needs to dry just a little bit though. So I'm gonna leave this area alone and I'm gonna darken up under the nose area and the mouth area, give it some dark value. Oh yeah, lots of bleeding right in there. I'm gonna let it set for just a second to see if I like it. But if I don't, if I wanna take some away, just get a paper towel and blot it. And I'm not pressing down, I'm just letting it float on top. And just kinda blot that, I'm gonna blot some of this away too. And this just needs to dry for just a second. So since that needs to dry, I'm gonna move on to the center of the ears. I like to suggest just a little bit of, of light red, which is, y'all know, it's pink, but I don't want it to look red, so I'm gonna add some water to it to really give it a lighter value inside the ears. Just a little bit. I like the way that looks. Okay. I'm gonna just touch that, it's still pretty wet. I wanna get that darker, but I think it'll bleed. So I'm gonna move on to the grass and I'm gonna be using some green and I'm just gonna start by making those wispy brush strokes. Oh, look how scratchy this looks. What do I need more of? Water. Watercolor paint needs to look watery. It needs to look transparent. 
And this grass is, it can be bent because he's like smushing it down. You wanna paint some Easter eggs beside him? Maybe even some grass right in here. You could add some spring flowers. I feel like there should be some grass like all in here. That's trying to bleed but not bother me too bad. I'm, I want it to be a little bit more green right in here. And I'm gonna add some wispy lines right in here. I love it. Let that dry. Again, you could paint some flowers, some spring, spring flowers in here. Make this your own. Just really have fun with watercolor. Let me see if this is dry. Yep, it's ready now. It really doesn't take long to get it to dry where you can make it darker. In watercolor paint, you can get darker easily, but it is hard or almost impossible to get it lighter. <laughs> it is there. The value, once it's on there with watercolor paint, it is there. So, I love it. I love watercolor. And I hope you have fun with this watercolor painting too. Okay, so I wanted to show you. Here's an example that I just painted on one of my videos. And this is one that I painted earlier on my super fast video. And I made a couple of splatters with my green by accident. But then loved it. So I just went in with more splatters. And um, I wanted to show you how to do that. So on this one, I have no splatters. But I'm going to show you how to add some splatter painting if you would like to do that. Because it just happened. And so I'm going with it. You take your green or whatever color you want to splatter paint and you want to use lots of water on your brush and you're just going to hold it down low with one hand and you're going to tap with the other so you're not making your mom crazy by slinging paint everywhere it only goes on the paper and it's great but you can rinse it out and get a different value and splatter Remember, you're holding your brush and tapping it with the other finger. If it won't come off the brush, that means add more water or add water and paint. But the harder you splatter, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come off. The harder you hit it there, you just, it's got to have paint on the brush. So I just wanted to show you all that.